Year end restaurants, urban resorts, spas, and top of the line hotels. Or demand exclusivity provided by the likes of Negros Occidental Golf and Country Club. To get a feel of how Negros was back then, all you have to do is step inside the Negros Museum, which was set up by the Negros Cultural Foundation. The permanent exhibit of the museum traces the history of Negros and the sugar industry, presented in a unique form of visual storytelling that walks the visitor through antiques and replicas built by local craftsmen. The exhibit begins with a replica of an antique boat and ends with a room of life-size dioramas depicting the revolt led by the local aristocracy against the Spaniards in 1898. The best thing about Negros, culture and how they work to preserve their culture. They're very proud of what they have. Even in this busy city, environmentalism has garnered a foothold. Right beside the provincial capital is the Negros Forest and Ecological Foundation and Biodiversity Center that houses samples of wildlife endemic to Negros. All of these animals are, are found only in the Western Visayas region especially in Negros Occident, Negros Island for that matter. We breed them and we are successful at breeding them. We have the first uh, eagle owls that, that was bred in captivity. We've done it twice. We've been breeding uh, the Negros Bleeding Heart, which had been deemed extinct in 1920, found in 1960. We had two couples here. Now we're up to 11 birds. And you'll also see here the Visayan spotted deer, which is highly endangered. Here we have about at least 18 of them. We have the Visayan warty pig, which is the most highly endangered warty pigs in the world. We have several of them here, and we've just bred them in captivity recently. Our goal eventually is to release them back to the wild. Where that wild is, is, uh, is of course the forest of Negros, Panay, and the nearby islands of Masbate and possibly Cebu. The main goal is to rehabilitate these forests before we can do anything in terms of the release. So hand in hand with our reforestation projects, with our livelihood projects, and educational awareness, which is critical for, for these animals to thrive once again in the forest, is a goal to eventually release them back to the wild with, with this objective. There is even an organic farm inside the city called Maze Organic Garden, which produces organically grown fruits, vegetable, and meat as well as its own compost. Maze Garden is, uh, this was developed uh, primarily to support the technology that we're offering to the farmers. No? Uh -huh. We're into organic farmery in Negros. And to support the organic movement, we have to have some showcase here, like we have this organic garden. No? Uh -huh. We have organic pigs there, we have a vegetable and other things that are organic. Okay. So farmers came here to study to learn and we give out some seminars with regards to vermicomposting, production of organic fertilizer and so on. My main product is a shredder. No? You shred the biodegradable and convert it to organic fertilizer to accelerate the decomposition process of biodegradables. And you could imagine that the one hectare farm is around five tons of uh, organic waste. When you convert that into organic fertilizer, the farmers will be producing not only organic rice but also uh, organic fertilizer excess, you could sell the excess product. The main objective actually is to increase the income of the farmers. Then we buy back at a fair price. Then we sell it retail. It also markets its own products under the name Fresh Start.
we put up a, a we call it Puro Organic, the corporation that will assist the farmers for their exist product. There's a complete uh, chain from production up to even added value for the for the products. Carabao's milk we buy from farmers also when we process into cheese. But best of all, by giving free seminars, the farm also promotes an advocacy to teach environment-friendly practices to small-time farmers to produce a green harvest themselves. But of course, Bacolod also has food and fun. From cafes, bake shops like Fleabee's Cupcakes, from family restaurants like 21 that provides comfort food to specialty places like Trace that caters to the Western palate. Or Mushu that provides a more eclectic menu that includes kebabs, adobo flakes, bangu salad, Prichon and pumpkin stew with talanga rice. Or even a quaint Euro Filipino fusion in the case of the Museum Cafe, right inside the Negros Museum, where one could get pastelillo queso, bangu spring roll, bitter balls, honey glazed talisay ham with palawan honey and homemade mustard cold cuts of roast beef and garlic dill mayonnaise, chicken in white almond sauce, cooked talisay ham in French baguette, as well as artisanal bread like cornbread, gray sesame, and whole wheat bread. If you want a place to relax, unwind, and enjoy good food, and treasure what you have, in the past, then Negros is the place to come. And then there's the nightlife. Bouncing, pounding, filled with music, color, and camaraderie that goes long into the balmy Bacolod night. We would like to invite you to Negros to see many beautiful places para makita nyo ang katamis sang Negrosanon. As you have seen, there is enough to see and experience in Negros Occidental for you to keep coming back again and again and again. And the Negrense's warm nature makes each visit feel just like Coming home. I'm Susan Calo Medina. Huwag magindayuhan sa sariling bayan.